Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Gran Turismo 5. Today is episode number 6. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. Right, so today what we're doing, I think we're going to um, go for some tuning parts for our Clio, because the next championship we do, we can actually take our Clio Sport with us. Um, so... This part cannot be fitted, this part cannot be fitted, that part cannot be fitted. That can't be fitted, great. Um, anything that we can fit then. So we can reduce the weight of the car a crap ton. Let's do that. That's taken a huge amount of weight off of the car. Um, let's see, engine, can we put in an ECU? Yes, we can. Um, can we do that? Yes, we can as well. 284 brake horsepower. I actually want to see how much power we can squeeze out of this thing. So obviously you have to go through that in order, which is a little bit frustrating. I always find um, when they force you to go in order is a little bit annoying. So yeah, how does this work as well? 292 brake horsepower for 2,500. And 294 for 450. I think I'll go for the cheaper option. Um, exhaust. That's the last one I think that we can do. Um, no, to be fair, we could do tires. Or do we have good tires? Hmm. 316 horsepower, though. That's a lot of horsepower. Um,. Hmm. Do we get... Oh, racing tyres are really expensive. 36,000 for racing softs. No thanks. Um. Okay. Um, let's take it to GT Auto. Because I think we may need to rebuild our engine as well. Because the engine is a little bit knackered in this car. Um, it is obviously a used car, so it probably will need it anyways. Right, let's overhaul the engine. This is literally like a comedy sketch. Just the guys waving their arms around. And here we go. That car should have like a thousand horsepower now. There we go. That was expensive, I have just realised. Ouch. Uh, so you can't change the wheels. Uh, oil change. Oil is still in good condition. That's okay. Awesome. Right. Let's go and start on the championships. What is it we got to start off with? Uh, A-spec. Let's take a look. Amateur series we're on. Yes. European hot hatch. That's it. Uh, so we're starting in Eager Norland, which is my favourite track in the game. And then we're going to the Rome circuit. Right, so we are here at Eager Norland. The track length is about a mile and a half. Um, and we are going to be driving a total distance of 4.5 miles. I don't act I haven't actually checked how much horsepower the car has now after giving it the engine overhaul. It sounds powerful though. Oh, it looks powerful. Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's a quick car. Here we go. Nice. Very nice around the first corner there. Perfect. Right. Brakes. Awesome. Nice. To be fair, the other cars are keeping up. But we are going to be speeding away. Speedy boy. Oh, hit the wall there. Nice.
Perfect. Round we go. Slowing down for the hairpin sections here. Am I drifting? Oh no, this car's real wheel drive, isn't it? They um, converted the clear to be real for this car. I was going to say though, that's a little bit weird that it's like oversteering. But yeah, it's a real wheel drive car, so kind of makes sense. Right, slamming onto the brakes through there. Perfect. Looking very good through this section here. Right. Brakes, brakes. Perfect. Slidey round there. I want to make a petition to make slidey a term in the dictionary. I don't think it's a term in the dictionary, so I want it to be in there. And also the word endy. Like, you know when you get a loaf of bread and you've got the bits at the end? It's called the endy bread. That word needs to be in the dictionary. Like its own term. Awesome. I do like this car. It doesn't have an interior model though. Um, a lot of the cars, I didn't realise this, but a lot of the cars in this game don't have an interior model. The thing that they did wrong with this game though, is unlike Gran Turismo on the PSP when they made this sort of around the same time, the PSP version had... Um, no interior model whatsoever, but you can still go on the interior of the cars. This one, they've sort of took that out, so you can't go into the interior, which is a little bit annoying. Because I do wish there was an interior view. Sometimes it's easier to drive on an interior view than a non-interior view. There's the finish line, though. Nice. 4 minutes and 2 seconds, 0.653 for that. Um, let's have a look here. 7,380 credits. Thank you very much. And we are now level 11. Nicely done. Right, so we are here in Rome. The track length is actually a lot longer than the last one. It is 2.1 miles. So we're going for about 6.5 miles for this race. But we are in a stunning Renault Megane. So let's go. I love this game so much, like, I'm really tempted to get out of my way, get out of my way. The VW Beetle there, I'm going to get past you, nice. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm really tempted to buy a PS4 just to get Gran Turismo Sport. Like, I know the game Gran Turismo Sport's already like three years into its life, but I really want to play it. If anyone is giving away a PS4, I will gladly take it. Nice. Ah, oh, there isn't an interior. I keep forgetting about that. onto the brakes. I think brakes need to be upgraded on this car. Can you actually upgrade brakes? That's something I'm going to have to find out. Here we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Not good. That wasn't great whatsoever. There we 
go. Slowing down very quickly there. Awesome. Gran Turismo is one of those games that just has a stunning scenery. And the field of view, yes, the car takes up that tiny space at the bottom of the screen. Like, it's nothing. The car is nothing on the screen compared to, say, Forza. Like, Forza, the car would take up a larger portion. But the fact is, the field of view and the angle, they get just right that you can admire the scenery as well while you're racing. And it sort of gives you more concentration as well on what's coming ahead. Because you can see directly in the middle of the screen is the road ahead. And that's sort of the easiest location for your eyes to rest. So you can look across to the side, you've got your leaderboard. The other side, you've got your mini-map, the top corner. It's just an easy central resting point. I say that and I crash. But it's game design like this that you don't realize is perfectly done like this for a reason because of how our eyes work and there is a lot of, almost like a lot of science behind the making of these games like they have to analyze everyone's eye movements and find out which is more comfortable for people to look at and that's why you see game layouts are changing so often because we're getting sort of more used to knowing where stuff is supposed to be placed and stuff like that. Perfect. Right, onto the brakes. Nice. Brakes again, perfect. Oh, sliding around that corner there. Hit the wall there as well. Not great. I think we did that on the first lap as well. But here we go. Across the line. Finish. What was our time there? Four minutes and 30 seconds. Fair enough. I will take that. That is a very decent time. And overall, we now have 31,000 credits. Right, let's exit and see what our next championship is. Right, so what we're going to be doing next is we are going to be doing the Japanese 90s championship. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to overhaul our Sylvia's engine. Um, and then we're going to be using the Sylvia in the championship. Um, so we're gonna, obviously going to upgrade it a little bit as well. Um, I don't know why, but the Sylvia is just such a beautiful looking car. Honestly, I love it. Um, so that is the engine overhauled, so it should be good. Uh, oil is in good condition. Um, so we can paint it in any of these colours that we own. Ooh, what do I want to paint it in? Because I don't want yellow. I want to... Can I do blue? Would that look good? Mm, let's go for it. It can't hurt to paint it. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, that was a good choice. I like that. I like that a lot. I am surprised. I I never noticed that Gran Turismo went this in depth. So the way you got colours was by buying cars that had that colour. And you could just paint it onto any car. And the fact that any car works with any colour smoothly. Mind you, Forza doesn't work smoothly with their colours. Even in Horizon 4, it still isn't as smooth. And this is just like, yeah, it works. Um, right, so let's take a look. So we can get some weight reduction, which would be very useful. 
Um, I don't think I want a carbon hood, though. Or bonnet. Um, so we don't have any performance parts, actually. So let's go and fit some of those on, then. Obviously, most of our money at the moment is coming from the special events. The actual A spec, we don't earn a lot. Um, racing air filter, yes, please. Um, because this is a higher event, I have a feeling we're going to need more performance parts. Hence why I'm putting these parts on. Um, so, sports exhaust. It's going to make the engine sound meaty, as the game says. 214 brake horsepower. I feel like we could squeeze... We'll probably need tyres. Sports softs. Purchase and install. Continue. And is there one more thing? Can we get... No, we can't afford a turbo now, can we? It can't even be fitted. Um, let's fit in a... Twin plate clutch. Why not? It's not every day you get a fit a Nissan with a twin plate clutch, is it? Um, I think these are five lap races as well. So putting on those sports softs are going to be so much better than having comfort tyres. Because the comforts will wear out very quick because they're not designed for that much horsepower. Um, yes, here we go. Japanese 90s. Let's do this. So we're on the Sakuba circuit for the first one for five laps. And then we are moving on to Cape. Right, so we are here on the Sakuba circuit. We're doing a 6.35 mile race. Let's get our nicely, freshly painted blue Sylvia. Let's give this a drive. Go, go, go. Oh, the Sylvia off the line is very quick now. But it does have nearly 30,000 credits worth of performance parts so that might be why awesome I found that credits seem a lot like dollars they seem a lot like dollars in this game which is surprising because you would expect a game like um Gran Turismo to have um, yen or something as their main currency. Oh, we were breaking very late there. Here we go. Perfect. And brakes. Perfect. Breaking again. Nice. Nice. Tires are looking very good so far. They're not getting too hot. Nice. Those sports soft tires have done a great job on this car. I haven't played Gran Turismo 5 in about four days since the last episode, um, but coming back to it, it's just so good. Honestly, it's one of those games that I enjoy, and I want to enjoy the entire of the game, um, but I have a feeling I will have to skip some of the championships, because otherwise this series will go on for way too long, like 100 episodes easy. picking up the speed perfect I am looking forward as well because obviously the first like 10 episodes are going to have really slow cars but hopefully by the time we get to the professional series we should start seeing some faster cars creeping in and if not I'll be pretty disappointed because again this is the first time I've ever played this um, GT mode I never played anything other than that Perfect, round that corner there. That 
That hairpin corner is always a little bit tricky to get round. Cape Ring is going to be a huge track though. Because you've obviously got a lot more circuit for the Cape Ring track. So that one's going to take a good seven minutes to complete easy. Here we go, nice. Perfect. down very quick there through there. interesting layout for me um, obviously because I'm using the X and the square button to accelerate and brake but I'm also using a thumbstick to steer so they're sort of in off positions from each other Perfect. Let's go, let's go. Final corner. Oh, we're going to have to lift there. And across the line. Our fastest time was that final lap as our 107.734. And we've got a 5.46 time in total, which is awesome. And we got 10,000 credits for that as well. So that is money we definitely needed. We're going to have to, in the next episode, I think, do some special events as well. Um... We're going to have to, I think, do NASCAR next, um, but that will be in the next episode. Right, on to Cape Ring. Right, so we are here on Cape Ring North. Uh, the track itself is 2.3 miles each lap. So overall, we are doing a 12-mile race. This is long, and our car averages around about 60 miles an hour. So I think this is going to be about a 10-minute race. Easy. Alright, come on, let's overtake the... What is that? A Celica. Toyota Celica. Nice. Right. Ah, oh, the Toyota Supra. I remember the days of Forza when that wasn't in the game. Here we go. Perfect. Brakes, nice. Oh, look at that. The car's gripping that corner there. 100 miles an hour around the spiral. Impressive. Over the jump. Nicely done. And hard onto the brakes here. Perfect. 
perfect. Oh, that was a corner cut and a half. Oh. Kind of not fair, that bit. Right, on to lap number two, or coming on to lap number two, should I say. Very high speed, about 110 miles an hour into the first corner there. Nice, right, brakes again. Very wide. That was not nice there. Awesome. Coming through here. Perfect. Alright, let's get around the first section and holding it through. No other car can go like 100 miles an hour around that section. I've driven this circuit so many times with like AMG GTs and stuff like that. Actually, the GT's not in this, but... Oh, the AMG SLS, that's it. I've driven the SLS around there, which is a really grippy, fast car, and that can't do 100 miles an hour around there. car has the power to do great things. Right, on to lap number three. Let's do this. The fact is, most of these tracks in Gran Turismo, like this track, Cape Ring, is a custom design track. So this is, doesn't exist in the real world. It is purely made up for Gran Turismo. And the fact is, the map is so good. Like, it is a decent racetrack. Um, I know the Eager Norwind one, the one that we did in the first race, that is also a custom track. Um, and I like that one too, quite a lot. Awesome. Perfect. Come on, let's get that 100 mile an hour again. Awesome. The tyres at the front are looking a little bit warm on the front on the uh, left hand side. Perfect. They are still all at the spiral section now. We could actually, if we go fast enough, we could lap them on the fifth lap. We might be in with the chance of lapping. this track so much though it is such a good track and the scenery just look over there the mountains in the distance 40 seconds ahead yeah very quick awesome And over the jump, 
Nice. Alright, this is like a catching up match. We're gonna see if we can catch up on the final lap. the corner there. I don't think we're gonna catch him. Fastest lap though, 144.697. Okay, so we didn't quite catch up, but we got very close to lapping. Oh, did I miss a braking zone? I think I did. Might have. No. Not good. Final straight and across the line. Finish. Eight minutes 55. So that was a lot quicker than I was expecting. But that was still a long race. Nine minutes for only 10 grand. I mean, in real life, that'd be good. But not in the game. That's not worth it in the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with all the stuff going on on the Mechanic CG channel, then be sure to go take a look in the description for links of socials and all sorts of other places. And also we have finally got merch down there, so go check that out. And if you want to help support the channel, hit that join button, it means the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>